the offensive in the Pyrenees. While Greg Lamond was left to ask, where is my team? Near the end, Gianni Bugno agreed it was not the time for infighting and the race's biggest rivals joined forces to chase Leblanc, but it was too late. Leblanc took the leader's yellow jersey. Welcome to the Tour de France on its second day in the Pyrenees, but what a day. I'm standing 2,150 metres above sea level on top of the Col de Tourmalet, and the wind always blows here. The riders come out of Spain this morning via the Col de Portelet, then over the Col de Bisque, then they cross the Tourmalet, and there are still two more climbs to come, including the finishing climb at Val Laurent. Luc Leblanc this morning in Hacker signing in in his yellow jersey. He'll need to be a very special rider if he's to lead the race by the end of this day. Greg Lamont should again be put under pressure, especially by the Spanish riders. This is the overall situation this morning. In the lead, Leblanc, 2 minutes 35 seconds ahead of Greg Lamont. Charlie Motte, the winner yesterday, in third slot. Maurizio Fondriest is fourth, and Miguel Indurain is fifth. And remember, he's won twice before in the Pyrenees. Pascal Richard, the new leader in the King of the Mountains, is sixth. Jean-Francois Bernard, seventh. Andy Hampston, eighth. Gianni Bugno, ninth and Pedro Delgado threatens in 10th slot. And the riders rolling out of Haka this morning in Spain, heading back on the hilliest possible route into France. And also, the riders fined last night for not wearing crash helmets. 136 of them faced a £100 fine, so nearly £14,000 collected by the race referees last night. And I think it'll be the same today, because virtually no one is wearing a crash helmet today. Now, you may remember uh, Simon was riding the race yesterday under threat of disqualification from the Tour de France because he refused to take the official transport provided by the Tour on the rest day. Well, the organization has reinstated Zimmerman, placed the complete blame on the manager of the motor road team, that's Jim Okovitz, and they, now, they have now banned him from the Tour de France for the rest of the race. The race was in no hurry to meet the mountains this morning and at 56 kilometres on the top of the Col de Portelet, Peter de Klerk, the former leader of the King of the Mountains, was first, Tilly Claverola was second, Pascal Richard in the polka dot jersey now was third and the whole field was right behind them. Then there was a breakaway as they started the climb of the Col de Beach, a 16 kilometres climb, Patrice Esno, Yvonne Madio and Guido, Guido Winterberg. They were caught by Gianni Bugno, Charlie Motte, the yellow jersey of Luc Leblanc, and Claudio Chiapucci with the main chase group not very far behind. It was Winterberg who went over the summit first, followed by Chiapucci, Bugno, and the yellow jersey of Leblanc. Greg Lamont was the best of the chase group, 15 seconds back. Andy Hampton was there as well, and the whole field then started the descent. And the descent of the Obisque is certainly not for the nervous. This is the descent where the riders can touch up to 60 miles an hour. And Greg Lamont, one of the finest descenders in the world, was soon passing Gianni Bugno, and so he was right back up with the leaders as they tore off towards the Col de Tourmalet. And on the Col de Tourmalet, a very select group made a steady pace all the way up, and they stayed more or less together. Greg Lamont, Indurain, Kia Pucci, Gerard Rouet, Luc Leblanc, Charlie Motte, Andy Hampston, Gianni Bugno, and the man that started the attack lower down the slopes of the Tourmalet, Conti, Although here, he has been dropped as the riders come up towards the summit. And in fact, the big name missing, Pedro Delgado, to believed to be over three minutes behind. And Greg Lamont in trouble just before the top of the Tourmalet. He's dropped back. He knows he descends well. He did this on the climb two of the Obis. And I'm sure he will rejoin the leaders as they now start on their way down as Chiapucci goes over the top of the Tourmalet, followed by Indurain and Andy Hampston.
And we are now on the fourth mountain of the day, the Col d'Aspan, a second category climb. And it is here where the legs of the majority of the leaders have exploded. This is Greg Lamont now as he looks across and sees Gerard Rouet force the pace with Andy Hampson. And this is not the leading group. This, in fact, now is the third group on the slopes of the Col d'Aspan. Out ahead and leading the race now, Miguel Indurain. He attacked on the approaches of the Aspan. He was joined by Claudio Chiapucci and then Gianni Bugno, Laurent Fignon and Charlie Motte gave chase. They are riding and here they are, just two minutes and ten seconds behind the two leaders. And the group we just saw of Greg Lamond, Andy Hampson, Gerard Drouet and Eduardo shows us they are two minutes thirty seconds back. And gone is the yellow jersey of Luc Leblanc. He just locked up, his legs just seemed to say enough. He fell back very, very rapidly from the group. And these are the two leaders we're looking at now. And number 35 is about 45 seconds away from being the new leader of the Tour de France. And that is Miguel Indurain. And whatever you said about Claudio Chiapucci last year as being a pretender in the Tour de France, well, eat your words because today has been really his. He's been incredible. But all since the beginning of the Tour de France, even on the flat stages, every time there was an opportunity, he attacked. Today, Miguel Indurain was attacked, and it looks as if Le Monde is on the floor. Somebody's probably, he's had a problem with the, with the crowd there. It looks as if he's touched somebody. He's on the road. The mechanic is there, pushing him away, but he's lost contact with the group. It definitely is not Greg Le Monde's day today. Well, let's have a look at that here. We can see what happens now. Le Monde at the back of this group. He just went down, Paul. He just seemed to go down. Let the car behind may have hit him. In the fact, Gatorade, the Gatorade car. The Gatorade car just touched his back wheel, and that's how Le Mans fell. But he's coming back to the group here. It just goes to show how dangerous it can be on these climbs. The Gatorade car was trying to come by to go up to Gianni Bugno, and it just caught the back wheel of Greg Le Mans, and he was over. But he's back in the group, but that must have shocked him quite a lot there. Well, that is amazing. Le Mans hit there by the team car of Gianni Bugno. Uh, straight back on his bike. No time to complain to anybody, and he's gone back up into the group. But Le Mans is not a happy man today. He's shown signs of the stress of the mountains here. And, in fact, the man has done a great ride. Number 91, Laurent Fignon, he joined the front group, which was 10 strong at the start of the climb of the Aspin. He went straight to the front, and he's gone away with Bugno and with Motte in pursuit of Indurain and Chiapucci. Pignon went over the top of the Tourmalet, one minute behind the group of Le Mans. He had to chase all the way, and he only made contact just before the bottom of the Aspin. And the first thing he did was went to the front and started setting the tempo. And when Gianni Bugno attacked, Laurent Pignon responded to that attack, and now he's doing a, an extremely good ride. So Pignon, the old man of the Tour de France, winner of the Tour twice in the early 80s, 83 and 84. And now, of course, trying to defend for his teammate, Luc Leblanc, but Leblanc has blown to the world and is the last time check we got was at 3 minutes and 40 seconds uh, behind the two leaders, Indurain and Chiapucci. Gerard Rouet here, a little bit of a surprise, Rouet in this group. And a year ago, he was a teammate of Laurent Fignon and Luc Leblanc. He switched across the Helvetia team this year. Shows us the number 42, Andy Hampston, number 71, having a good ride in the Pyrenees today. And Le Mans has ridden his way back into this group and straight to the front. I'm wondering if the knock there, Paul, uh, might release some adrenaline for Greg. It might do, but I don't think it's going to be enough to pull him back up to the leaders because they look so good at the moment. This is Indy on the front, sharing the lead with uh, Chiapucci. Every, every time they lower, lower the pace a little bit, they change over and one will share with the other. They're doing an extremely good ride, building up that breakaway all the time. Well, what a super crowd on top of the Col d'Aspan, seeing the Spanish rider and the Italian rider come to the top. As Spain knew it was only a matter of time before they saw one of their riders out front, and it's the one they all wanted, of course, Miguel Indurain. He's won twice here in the Pyrenees, and uh, not too far away from where we finished today is the small town of Cotere. He won there, and now Indurain is driving the pace again over the top of the Col d'Aspan. The long, long descent, then the valley road, and then we enter the climb out of the valley to the top, and that is a climb of seven kilometres. He's now got the race uh, in his grasp, if he can push home what he started today, and he knows the only man he's got to worry about at the moment, at least, is Claudio Chiapucci, anxious to get on with the chase, and he's already off downhill. Well, he's straight away setting the pace on the descent here. Uh, Miguel Indram 
won't let him get too far away because Indiran descends extremely well. In fact, it was on the descent of the Tourmalet that he managed to pull clear. As we go over the top here, we'll have a chance to see what damage has been done by this breakaway of the two riders, Kia Pucci and Indiran. Well, the crowd must have known something we did today because normally the Col d'Aspan doesn't have many people on it. It's only a small climb. It is actually one of the most beautiful climbs here in the Pyrenees because it's slightly lower altitude and the fields are lush green and the woods around are lush green as well. But they must have estimated that by the time the riders came to the fourth mountain of the day, the legs would be complaining a little bit and that they've hung on to each other's shirt tails throughout the stage today. But on this climb, they have just cried enough and the race has flown to the world. Over the top already, Indrian and Kiapucci heading up now towards the summit. The clock is counting down on the right of our screen there. The champion of Italy, Gianni Bugno. And at the back, the former double winner of the Tour de France, Lonon Fignon and Savage in the middle. The man who says he's no interest in winning the Tour de France, only stages, Charlie Motte. And if he won this one today, Paul, and there's every reason to think he could because there's still a way to go, he would win a three in a row. And I've really no idea who the last rider was, if indeed it's ever been done, three in a row. I can't remember three in a row ever being one, but that's the thing about Motte, I think when he announced that he was no longer going to ride to try and win the Tour de France, it was like a liberation from him. It got a lot of problems off his shoulders, and he rides totally relaxed now. He just takes every day as it comes. And look at the time. It's going to be over two minutes as we come over the top of the climb here. Bunyo doing all the work here. All he wants to do is try and get back into contention here. So Bunyo, second, uh, uh, sorry, third, at uh, two minutes, uh, ten seconds, the clock count. It might have been a bit less. I know there's the line. Two minutes, 13 seconds now as Bunyo goes over ahead of Motte and uh, Fignon. But Greg Lamond now is in big trouble with the finishing climb still to come. And goodness knows what has happened to Pedro Delgado, but he's got to now be over six minutes back. We'll take a short break. So we're now on the final three kilometers of the climb to the finishing line. And Miguel Indurain is now the leader of the Tour de France. And that most certainly, Paul, is official. Gianni Bruno is chasing them alone behind. But these two have fended off and, in fact, pulled away uh, since they made a very rapid descent of the Col d'Aspin. The situation on the road now. These two are leading Gianni Bruno by approximately two minutes and maybe five seconds. Motte and Fignon, the two French riders, are battling it out behind Bruno. Then we have a group containing Andy Hampston, Gerard Rouet, Eduardo Chauzat, and Greg Lamond, and another Z rider, Eric Boyer, who came up like an express train after being a minute down on the top of the Aspin. And they're going back here now to what is the fight up here for fifth place, and that is an attack by Laurent Fignon. He really has been looking like his old self again today. You can see how he's really suffering now, how far forward he's sitting on the saddle. This man really can suffer. He knows Bugno's in front of him, but he knows Le Monde is behind, and he's thinking maybe about a place on the podium in Paris. He's thinking also that the Tour de France is not over. And there is Bugno now, heading up towards the finish. It won't be too long before he arrives up at the finishing line. And there are thousands upon thousands of people on top of the mountain at uh, Val... Laurent, and I've never seen a crowd like it. This is the first time the tour has been here. Well, unbelievably, Paul Sherwin and I left our hotel at 10 minutes to 6 this morning, two kilometres inside the Spanish frontier, and within about 15 kilometres, we were in horrendous traffic jams and worried we would not make the finish because of the number of cars that were heading out to the mountains on the French side of the Pyrenees. And here's a couple of examples of the Spanish as they run alongside Laurent Fignon. They're, oh dear me, I felt that one. And the Fignon not wanting anybody else and the Spanish quickly backing off. Well, it's very difficult for the rider. He's been suffering all day. And when you have someone riding, running alongside you like that, it really does put you off your rhythm. Fignon just wants to suffer in silence. He knows the crowd's there, but it really is off-putting when someone runs alongside you like that. Well, Laurent Fignon looking good again. Now, when he was knocked out of the tour by that eight-second defeat by Greg LeMond in that remarkable time trial a couple of years ago, he didn't ride at all well last year and left the tour in the first few days. He's not really had a great start to the season either, uh, but he's prepared quietly for the Tour de France, made no comment, and now he's giving us his answer. He's riding this race very, very well indeed. He parts company 
with uh, his manager Cyril Guimar at the end of this season. He will leave the Castorama team and I would think after a performance like this there will be quite a few teams want to sign. Look at this though, Greg Lamont uh, Paul is in trouble at the back of this group. This has got to be one of the worst days in the life of Greg Lamont, I think. Whenever we look down at him, he's got his head bowed in agony. Every time uh, Eric Boyer comes to a corner, he's looking round to see where Lamont is. He's waiting for him, trying to cheer him up, trying to help him, coach him all the way to the top of the climb. He's, he's been left he's by gone. Andy Hampton and shows us. And there, Eric Boyer stayed alongside him to try and make sure he limits his losses a little bit because Lamont really is going through hell today. Further up the mountain now, and the champion of Italy goes on relentless. Any more time checks, Paul? No more time checks at the moment. There's been a few problems with the radio today, but I think Gianni Bugno seems to be closing in a little bit. Still around the two-minute mark, but the Greg Lamont group is still five and a half minutes and uh, Laurent Fignon is about 25 seconds behind Bugno at the moment. Well, for Bugno to take the race lead, he's got to make up a lot more time yet on the leaders, and I don't think he will, and that's for sure. Injure now, who started ahead of him this morning, ahead of him on the road. Obviously, he will be the yellow jersey by the end of the day. Uh, Luc Leblanc, I think, will come in over 10 minutes behind. And sadly for us as British spectators, we haven't seen anything of Robert Miller at all today. He's been struggling behind the field since he cracked on the tourmalade. And now it's two kilometres to go for Gianni Bugno, the winner of the stage at Alpe d'Huez last year, and now in the frame again in the mountains of the Pyrenees. Well, the Spanish press at the start of the year weren't very kind to Bugno because he didn't ride well, but I think this man has meticulously prepared his Tour de France. He came to almost at the right time for the Tour of Italy. He missed out on one or two of the mountain climbs, but I think now in the Tour de France, he's at the top of his condition. We've seen him promise him all, of, all along through these flat stages, and now he really is there. But Fignon is a man who has surprised us too because he's had a very hard time this year towards the end of Italy. He had to abandon the Tour of Italy, and then the race just before the Tour de France, the Tour de, Tour of uh, Puy, he managed to win a stage, and everyone said, well, it's not a, really, not a really big race, but Fignon has shown that he, he's still got a bit of fight left in him. And these two riders are going to have to decide sooner or later how they're going to sprint out the finish because they're not too far from it now. Kierpucci setting the pace and he's been very strong today while Injuain waited until he felt the time was ripe to put in the killer blow. And here is Fignon under two kilometres to go and judging by his tempo, you know, it would not surprise me if in those two kilometres he managed to sneak up on Gianni Bugno and beat him to the line. Indurain heading up now, one kilometre to go for the two top riders in the Tour de France today. Now, a year ago, Indurain at this point was leading Greg Lamont in the yellow jersey to the summit of Luz Ardiden. And then, in the last 500 metres, he dropped Greg and he won the stage and applauded the crowd. Now, today, the tables have turned. Lamont has gone probably the best part of six minutes behind and maybe more. And Miguel Indurain, when he gets to the summit, will probably again applaud the crowd and this time, he'll be pulling off the yellow jersey. But while these two riders think about the sprint, we have to think about the time as well. Miguel Indurain needs two minutes and nine seconds lead over Le Mans because Luc Leblanc is totally out of the picture. He's more than eight minutes behind at the moment. So as long as Le Mans comes in over two minutes and nine seconds behind Indurain, he's going to put the yellow jersey on at the top of the climb. We've got a little bit of a downhill descent now into the finish line. It's quite tricky after such a hard climb. We'll have to see. Kia Pucci's got the best position at the moment. Indurain's leading out, just thinking about the time that he can gain. Well, these two must feel absolutely elated now. That left-hand bend indicating the end of such a cruel day in the Pyrenees. No more climbing today. And now they're heading down towards the finishing line. Kia Pucci looks to me as though he's thinking of the stage win. And Indurain, you know, may not offer too much resistance because Kia Pucci more than pulled his weight in this breakaway and it may be by way of a present. In fact, there's an indication there from uh, Indurain. Oh, it was the left-hand bend into the finish. As they swing now up towards the line, Indurain is going to lead them out for the finish. The clock is on. Look at this. Seven hours, 11 minutes. And there goes Kia Pucci. Indurain chases him, but I don't think he will beat him. Kia Pucci is back in the Tour de France in a big way. And a salute, too, from the new leader of the Tour. I'm sure about that, Miguel Indurain. And here is Bugno now heading up towards that same corner. So he's still a little way from the finish. And Fignon under the kilometre to go. 
he'll be delighted with his performance today. His team may have lost the individual lead in the Tour de France, but Donald Fignon could find himself in the top five tonight now, and that will be a great performance for him. Here comes Bruno up towards the line. A minute 15 seconds has ticked by. And the champion of Italy comes home very much still in with a big chance of winning this Tour de France when he goes to the Alps because he's won there last year. A minute 28 seconds, the gap for Bagno. And Laurent Fignon swings into the home straight. He's hung on well to his fourth place, considering he was way off the back over the top of the coals. He chased, he caught up, he went with the lead split. And now he's going to be well pleased with fourth place today. The time gap not so bad either. Two minutes, 50 seconds down. And you can probably hear the cheer from the crowd. And the last few bends on this cruel day as Greg Lamond hangs on to his teammate Eric Boyer. Hang on, hanging on is the word. Boyer is actually waiting for him there. Looking back to the finish, this is Charlie Motte coming in in fifth place. Benchman, who's won the last two stages of the Tour de France this year, now taking a fifth place and keeping himself right on top of the leaderboard. Well, at least among the leaderboard. Three minutes, 53 seconds for Motte. And Andy Hampson coming in to take sixth place today. And although it's yet to be calculated, I think that Andy may now be the leader in the King of the Mountains competition. He scored well today, Andy Hampson, rode his first Tour de France, finishing fourth, the best rookie, uh, back in 1986, but six minutes back for Andy Hampson. Eduardo shows us he will take seventh place today. The riders coming in in ones, this Tour de France, which we've seen for the last 13 days, finish in big bunches, and now look at this, 6.23 down. So Greg Lamond coming in towards the finish. Here he is, a Boyer who's played the faithful domestique these last 30 kilometres, bringing him home just over seven minutes back. Uh, Greg Lamond will finish in ninth place behind his teammate, Eric Boyer. And the time gap, the clock will stop at seven minutes and 16 seconds. Greg Lamond hasn't lost the tour, but he's an awful lot of work to do now to win it. What an absolutely superb day of racing we've seen today in the Tour de France. Let's first of all have a look at the day's result. A win for Claudio Chiapucci by a single second over Miguel Indurain. In third place, Gianni Bugno. In fourth, Laurent Fignon. And in fifth, Charlie Motte. Greg Lamont cracks in the last 50 kilometres today and finishes 7 minutes and 16 seconds behind the day's winner in ninth place. Now look at the face here of Miguel Indurain, the new leader of the Tour de France and a man who I feel has felt he has accomplished his mission today. Ironically, as he was called up to pull on the leader's yellow jersey, his teammate Pedro Delgado was finishing over 14 minutes behind. Let's have a look then at the new overall classification. This is it. Indurain now leading Charles Motte of France by three minutes. Bugno of Italy is third. Chiapucci of Italy is fourth. And Greg Lemon still stays in the top five, but now he's five minutes and eight seconds back. The day's yellow jersey, by the way, Luc Leblanc, finished over 12 minutes down today, and Robert Miller was almost 31 minutes back. The new king of the mountains, Claudio Chiapucci, the day's stage winner, and doesn't he deserve that? This will go down as one of the most historical days racing in the Tour de France, and it was a superb day. Tomorrow we'll be on the road again. Today, let's just savour what has been a fabulous day out. Goodbye.